Shalom, and light ones. Good to see you guys. Good to be here with you guys again. Oh uh, man, we got a we got a special treat for y'all today. Um, I'm gonna start putting Q and A in front of all my videos, so y'all know it's questions and answers. And uh, today we're gonna be in Proverbs chapter 18, the book of wisdom. All right. So I know, I know um, a lot of people are excited. I brought brought a bunch of my weapons with me. I usually read straight out of the King James, but um, I brought my other Bibles too because Proverbs is, is heavy. It's kind of heavier. It's kind of deeper, you know. So we're going to get right into it. But first, say a word of prayer. Share if you care. Share if you care. It's been a while. But you know, just having the Father's Day with, with my 12, my um, 12 tribes and all that. <laughs> All my children, my wife and stuff. I appreciate all the love. You know. I love you guys. But let's get to it. Let's get to it. Y'all, we're going we gonna to move through this as quickly as possible. Making sure that we're getting the fullness of the word as well. So, with understanding, all right? So, let's focus on the Lord while we say a brief word of prayer over this bread of life. Abba Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day and this time. We thank you for allowing us to get on social media and to share your word and break bread with everyone, God. May, uh, may you add a blessing to those who might share, those who might comment and ask questions. May the questions be answered according to what you would say, Lord God, according to your word, Lord God. Give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding upon your scriptures, Lord, so that we might be a light to our household, a light to our cities, a light to our community, and a light to this world. Lord, have your way in us, Lord God. I speak a healing to every life, Lord God, that might come on here, Lord God, every life under the sound of my voice and their families, Lord. There's nothing too big or too small for you. We trust you. We lean on you. We depend on you. We thank you for the promises that you've given us, and we know that you will answer our prayers and that they're already answered. Give us the eyes to see the answered prayers. Give us the eyes to see the manifested miracles, Lord God, from the spirit realm. We thank you for your grace, your mercy upon our souls. We love you. We bless you. In Yeshua's name, amen. And it is so. All right. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18. Verse 1 says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddles and inter with all wisdom. It says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and into metals with all wisdom. So, I'm the other Bible that I'm reading with is the NLT. It says, "Unfriendly people care only about themselves." The King James Version said, "Through desire, a man have to separate himself, so he he cares only about himself, right?" And they lash out at common sense. It says, seeketh and intermeddles with all wisdom. So, it seems like it's just, he just uh, messes with. When you meddle with something, it means to mess with, right? All right, let's go to verse 2. A fool have no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover himself. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. Have you dealt with somebody like that? I have. You know, people who listen just to talk, you know, but the Bible tell, teaches us that in all our getting, get understanding. Why? Because understanding is the powerful part of love, a very powerful part of love. If you love somebody, if you care for somebody, you're going to seek to understand them. Like whatever their stance is, a lot uh, what we're dealing with in the world, we're dealing with uh, a lot of racial tension, a lot of things going on. But if people sought out to understand one another and show that love and compassion, the passion of Christ, then then it will be less problems less issues more more people coming together for for the greater cause right verse three it says when the wicked comes then comes also contempt and ignominy reproach that's what the king james version said uh the nlt says doing wrong leads to disgrace and scandalous behavior brings contempt so it's telling, remember, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It's telling us that um, when we do wrong, 
is only going to lead us to, to, to feeling wrong at the end of the day. And this is given the understanding that we ha have a good heart. But it took time for people to, to, to have a messed up heart, right? It comes from speaking the wrong way, then living the wrong way, and staying in that way for a certain amount of time. So a lot of things that we, we learn, we have to unlearn, right? Verse 4 says, The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Wise words are, are like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. Somebody who is wise, all they can speak is wisdom. All they can speak is wisdom. Somebody who is wise, someone who is truly wise. I know... I know that I never want to speak anything if it's not God, God's word. That's one of my prayers every day. God, don't let me say anything if it's not God's word. That's why you, um, a lot of people don't hear me talk a lot. I don't talk a lot about a lot of things because I feel like that I should charge my words. You know what I mean? I learned that looking at Christ and mimicking Christ, you know, um, a lot of his power was what, and what he didn't say. You know, and that's, that's how we as followers of Christ, should be. All right, verse 5. It says, It's not good to accept the person of the wicked uh, to overthrow the righteous in judgment. It's not right to equip the guilty or deny justice to the innocent. You hear that? That's a fact. No need to be interpreted. It says, It's not right to acquit the guilty or deny justice to the innocent. Let justice be served. The Bible says that God loves love justice right and judgment and hates robbery for burnt offering so god is about getting justice god is about he is justice god is about making sure things are fair all right verse six a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes fool's words get them into constant trouble quarrels they are asking for a beating, right? Mm -hmm. You always see, this is how you can tell a fool from a wise man. Wise man, is, you don't always see up in, in some, some kind of argument, right? But a fool, you can always see them in some kind of trouble arguing about something, right? Um, verse 7, it says, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. So listen. So when we, what we want to learn is how not to be a fool. Proverbs oftentimes give the comparison between a fool and a wise and teaches you how to be wise, right? So, so as we read this, we learn how not to be the fool and how to be more wise. We, we already learned so far to, to not speak many words, speak in wisdom. We already learned so far to, uh, to speak to wise people. You know, know what the wise person looks like. Know what a, a fool looks like. Verse 8, it says, The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Um, verse 8 in the LLT says, rumors, rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. All right. So we know the Bible says that we shouldn't gossip, right? We shouldn't be backbiters, right? So if we talk about somebody, you know, we as believers should be praying about them. If we bring up somebody's name, we should be praying about them, like God help them. It can be as simple as God help this person to get better. If you feel like somebody has an issue, it can be simple as, hey, God, help, help this person get better. Whoever you, um, the conversation is about, God, look over this person. God, heal this person's mind. God, help this person's situation. Because... You know, even though it might seem like is is an entertaining thing to do to talk about somebody, you know, um, speaking on it, you don't want to hear about some some negative thing about somebody all the time to give you the reason to talk about it, right? So you pray for that person because um, it comes to you, it comes past your ear. Sorry, guys, it comes past your ears so that you can pray. Maybe you're the only one that's that's gonna pray for that person. So we, we pray about them instead of talking about them. So it says, um, rumors are dainty morsels that sink deeply into one's heart. So it seems harmless, but it gets into your heart, and you really start to feel some way about this person. You ever, you ever heard some, um, been around with somebody talking about somebody, but when you see them, you're like, 
wait, this is not the person that the, these people were talking about. You know what I mean? It sinks into your heart. So you got to mind what you what you listen to, mind what you watch, mind what you say, because it sinks into your heart. All right. Verse nine. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. We know what slothful is. That means laziness, right? That's one of the seven deadly sins. It says a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. So if you're not working, if you're not working uh, um, in any way, I'm talking about working nine to five, working on your business, working in your household, working, giving the word, preaching the word, teaching the word. If you're not working, you're the same as the people who are taking this, this country down, taking your cities down, this community down. You're, matter of fact, it doesn't say you're the same. It says, it, oh, it does say that you're the same. But I think. It's brothers. All right, y'all brothers. That's what it says. All right, King James and NLT. It says, he that, that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. So y'all on the same team. Y'all on the same team. So I don't want to be on the same team as, as somebody who's, who's wasting or who's, destruct, who's destructive. You know what I mean? Verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and is saved. That's our highlighted word of the day. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. I was talking about this the other day. A lot of people get caught up and all, all caught up over the name of Jesus, right? But you got to understand what that, what that name means. So it's not just Jesus because his name was also Yeshua as well, right? And he goes by many other names. Um, what is it? Isaiah chapter 9, <laughs> verse 6. Make sure y'all fact check me too. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Can y'all sit down? Can y'all sit down? Sit down. All right, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Um, it tells us that how God has many names. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, um, Almighty Father. You know, he has many names, right? And, and Jesus revealed names of God and, and showed us, you know, how we should look at God, the different ways we should look at God, right? So I wanted to bring that up because of his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. So the name of the Lord, what is someone's name? Somebody's name is their reputation. What is God's reputation? God, I mean, almighty God, father God, the, his name is his reputation, everything, his character, his makeup. So that's what's a strong tower and the righteous run to it and is safe. So you run to his character, you run to his person, you run to his ways, you run to who he is, what he represents, Father, Abba, that's what you run to, and that's how you are safe. A lot of people think they can just say Jesus or Yeshua, and then they're safe. No, I want you to understand that you're safe in the person and character of Christ, the Spirit of God. You're safe in his will, in his word. All right? Verse 11, the rich man's wealth is his strong city and as a high wall in his own conceit the rich think their wealth as a strong defense they imagine it to be a high wall of safety all right i mean it seems like they're going to talk talk about something else verse 12 before destruction the heart of a man is haughty and before honor is humility it says haughtiness goes before destruction humility precedes honor all right so verse 11 Yo, can y'all sit down? Thank you. So the rich have um, whole safety, um, think their wealth is keeping them, um, is, is, is defending them, right? Um, and they, and it's, this word says they imagine it to be a high wall of safety. But when, you are in, when you're in trouble, your wealth doesn't save you. It doesn't save you because it doesn't save you from yourself. A lot of people try to drown themselves in sorrow. A lot of people commit suicide, you know what I'm saying? Because of, because of what they go through in their mind, you know what I mean? Because they uh, chase after, after wealth, right? And it's not wrong to, to get rich. I don't want you guys to assume that it's wrong to get rich. It's not um, wrong to get wealth. But the way that you get wealth, and that's why I think it comes to... Um, Verse 12, they, they go together. It says, hardiness goes before destruction uh, and humility precedes honor. So, it's how the heart is changed. That's right. So, so um, how the rich depend on their wealth right. as safety and defense, that's, that's pride. You know what I mean? That's not true. That's false. That's why it says it's imagination, right? 
and it says humility precedes honor. So the humble receives, um, precedes honor. Um, let's give a scripture that, that talks about it. It says, God said, if you humble yourself, you shall be exalted. But if you exalt yourself, you shall be abased or brought low. The Bible also says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he shall exalt you in due time. So he, he knows the perfect way that you can get to success and riches and wealth without you being hurt, without you having to go through things in your mind, you know what I mean, without something destroying your conscience, all right? And God, God wants us to be wealthy. He wants us to be healthy. Um, verse 13, it says, he that answereth a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. Don't, don't answer something before you hear it. It's a spouting off before listening to the facts. It's both shameful and foolish. It's wise to listen to it all the way through. That goes back to what we were talking about earlier with understanding. Or all you're getting, get understanding. A fool answers without even understanding. He doesn't care about understanding. He only, he only listens to speak. Right? So if we get understanding, we won't look like a fool. Don't jump. And that's one of the seven deadly sins too. Look, we got two of the seven deadly sins um, here in, in just this chapter alone. One was um, sloth, and then this one is feet that go quick into evil. That's one of the seven things that he hates, feet that go quickly into evil. So if you get understanding, you won't move quickly. You think about it, then think again, and then think that last time, all right? And that's how you stay out of trouble. Verse 14, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Verse 14, the human spirit can endure a sick body, but who can bear a crushed spirit? And that's what we were talking about earlier. That's confirmation. That, that's exactly what it's talking about. And that's, that's what the word should do. When you study the word, it should confirm the things that you get. The revelation that you get, it should be confirmed in that same chapter. In that same chapter, it should be confirmed in that, the, the revelation that you get. It, you can't have some outlandish thing that's not confirmed in the word. All right? So it says... The human spirit can endure sick body, but who can bear a crushed spirit? That conscience being crushed. How did you go about getting wealth? How did you go about being successful? What did you do? Who was hurt? You know what I mean? Or did you allow God to bring you through? And let me clarify, God bringing you through into success. It's not him just putting you there just because you pray to him. It's not that. It, it means acknowledge him in all your ways. That's what the Bible says. He said, um, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge, acknowledge God in all your ways and he shall direct your paths. All right. He's going to direct. He's going to tell you, hey, go here. And him meaning his wisdom, his name, his wisdom, his character, everything that he is. If you wear his character, it's going to tell you where to go in life. You're going to you're going to be like, hey, I know this to be success because I am wise, because God has made me wise by following after his character and his ways. Amen. Amen. All right. It says. A, uh, a man's gift makes room for him. Wait. All right. This first, verse 15. The heart of a prudent gets knowledge, and the ear of the wise seek knowledge. Intelligent people are always ready to learn. Be teachable. It's something I posted on my page. I reposted on my page. Um, um, be teachable. The Bible tells us to be teachable. Something I want to read um, soon again is the book of Timothy. So y'all might want to get into that. Also, hopefully I can um, read it with you guys. The book of Timothy in the Bible, it, it talks about the order of the church and structure. But it says intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. And what, did that, what does that sound like? Ready to get understanding. That's someone who is intelligent. That's someone who is smart. So uh, verse 16 says a man's gifts makes room for him and brings him before great men. Given a gift can open doors, it gives access to important people. Okay. Now, I, I, found, I, I found what I think is an error. You let me know in the comments what you think. I think this is an error in the New Living Translations. So that's why you got to um, read them side by side. Because um, verse 16 in the NLT says, Given a gift can open doors, it gives access to important people. But the Bible says that gifts blind the prophet. So, and I know that if you give a gift, people expect that from you. And I know you should um, come into places bearing gifts if you're coming into someone's home. So that's, you know what I mean? Um, translated from the original language, 
you know, it, it's, it's issues in there. So that's why you got to study the word. He doesn't tell us to read the word. I, I don't want you guys to make that mistake. And that's the problem with a lot of us is that we just read the word and think that we just got it. But if we study, <laughs> the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, you know. Um, verse 16, a man's gifts make rooms for him and bring him before great men. A man's gift. Now, to me, to me, from the King James Version, that means the gift that God has given you, your spirit, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. That's what this whole chapter was talking about. In context, right. that's what it means. Right. So, so that, was, that was clearly out of context and not to bash anything, but I'm going to go by the context of Scripture and the Holy Spirit that's within me. All right, don't don't get some outlandish revelation that doesn't that doesn't go with anything that the the speaker, the writer, or the spirit of God is saying. Amen. Amen. So he's talking about your gift, your natural gifts, and even your talent as a gift. You know, that brings you before a great man. So you got to use your life experiences as well. The, you have to apply the word to your life, and that's that's how you um, get the word and its perfection. Verse seventeen. He that is first. In his own cause seems just, but his neighbor comes and search, searches him. That's really good. The first to speak in court sounds right until the court's examination begins. So um, just like the situation that's going on in the world, right? Everybody, all this first news is coming out. It sounds right. Like, oh, this is what's going on. That's what's going on about the virus. That's what's going on. This is what's going on. But it has to be cross-examined. It has to be studied all the way out. And all you're getting, get understanding. So don't move. He said, uh, the Bible says, don't be afraid of sudden fear. Don't be afraid of sudden fear. So something comes upon you and it, and it scares you. He, he said, don't be afraid of that. You know how like somebody pops out of somewhere, you know, on you and it startles you? He said, don't be afraid of that. So don't stay in that state. Maybe that it may have startled you what's going on in the world, but don't stay in that state. Study and understand. Learn what you can do so that you can operate and move on without fear. All right? Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. That's how we combat fear. With power, love, and a sound mind. You know, and we can only do that by trusting in the name of the Lord, like it says in verse, verse 10. And what is his name? His name is his character. His name is his ways, his makeup, all who he is, his person. All right? All right, verse 18, the lot cause, causes contention to cease and parts between the mighty. Verse 18, flipping a coin can, lead, can end arguments. It settles disputes between powerful opponents. It's interesting because, you know, in a, in a battle realm, we flip a coin to see who goes first in the battle, you know, and they, they use that a lot in old, in old times, you know, um, because you're not, how do we flip a coin today? Thank you, Holy Ghost. How do we flip a coin today? We got me and you having a conversation, right? We can't, I got my knowledge, you got your knowledge. But if, if we don't trust each other in our knowledge, we need another source, right? So we're supposed to look to God. The word of God is supposed to be that, that, uh, that double-sided coin. You know what I mean? Some people use a physical coin. They cast it lots back in the days. They drew straws, right? And and whatever was chosen, they know that somebody didn't cheat or, or things like that. But that can be cheated. But this word can't be cheated. You know what I mean? God can't be cheated. God's spirit can't be cheated. All right? So that's um, the double-edged sword, the double-sided coin. You know what I mean? The, God's word can be used in every way. As long as it's to the good, it's truthful, it's right, and it's good, do it quickly. Verse 19, a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong, we got like three verses left, city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. All right. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate with locked bars. We go back to that. And all you're getting, get understanding. Don't. If you can avoid it, avoid arguing with your friends. Avoid arguing with your family. Avoid arguing with people who you care about. You know what I mean? Even if you're right and they're wrong, you know what I mean? Which it should be, God is right. And, and you know, we standing on God's side. But avoid the argument. If this person is stuck in that way, you show them, you show them by example. And that's what we are to do. We, how, we, how do we let our light shine? 
you know, we show about our ways and actions and people can learn from our example. Just like somebody smokes cigarettes and they tell somebody not to smoke, that person is not, is not really going to listen to that person that's telling them not to because they're doing the same thing. So actions speak louder than words. We know that, right? So if we live the way that we want people to learn, then it'll be easier to, to tell them something. When we open up our mouth, we'll be like, they can say, hey, this person has been living that way. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I live a righteous life, so that I could be a light to, to all my friends and family. Verse 20, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled, right? It says, wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. Mmm. I see something else in that. You know, um, it says wise words satisfy like a good meal. Amen. Um, the right words bring satisfaction. Amen. Um, King James Version says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. To me, it could be looked at in both ways, like a double-sided coin. You know, if if you if you speak in negative, you gotta be you gotta be satisfied with that fruit. You know what I mean? You're not often satisfied, but at first it seems like satisfaction. You know, according to the definition of what satisfaction is, you know, it seems like satisfaction at first. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So you make your bed, you lay in it. I know you heard that old saying, you make your bed, you lay in it. So that's what I think about, it, you know, that whatever you speak, you shall receive. You know, I like to look at things on both sides, just like God gave the blessings and the cursing. Like um, on the other side of blessings is always a curse. It's not that God... God cursed anybody is always a curse on the other side of blessings. If you don't do such and such, you know, automatically the principles that are in effect, the laws of the universe, automatically you're going to get the, the opposite if you, if you don't do right. If you do wrong, you, you, you're going to get wrong. If you, do, if you do right, you're going to get right, right? So I, I can look at that in both ways. Verse, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's confirmation. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. It says, um, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who talk will reap the consequences. Oh, that's what I was just saying. Look, bless the Lord. Verse 22, that's how it should always look. The word should always confirm itself. It always should co co confirm itself. When you get in a revelation, it should always be confirmed in the word. Um, verse 22, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure and receives favor from the Lord. It's one of my favorite verses. Check out um, Storm's. Uh, marriage group on Facebook. That's one of the highlighted verses. On um, a lot of people like to quote that scripture, verse 22, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing, and they leave it at that. And I think it's important to note that you, you have to remember or speak the full scripture. Because remember, it's not, it, it wasn't originally written in chapter, verse, and scripture, but it's in one whole scroll. It says, whoso finds a wife finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. So God gives you favor for um, finding a wife, finding that good thing. You, you have an extra blessing on your life for that. And I can attest to that because, you know, my life is blessed because of my wife. Verse 23. The poor use, use entreaties, but the rich answer roughly. Uh, it says, the poor plead for mercy, the rich answer with insults. Um, I mean, not, not the, <laughs> the poor plead for mercy, like uh, people protesting and peacefully protesting. That's pleading for mercy for what's going on in the world. But we know Donald Trump, you know what I'm saying? He, he answers with insults. He talks with insults. Even though he might be doing a lot of good things, you know what I mean? He, 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 he's really not that wise. You know what I mean? So that's what causes all the chaos. Because the king, if you got a rightful king in place, then, you know, the, the world, the, whoever he's governed over will be better. Um, verse 24. There are friends who destroy each other, but a, fr but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. A man that have friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I find that I find that to be true. That word is blessing divine. That was Proverbs 18. I find that word to be true because I got um, biological brothers and sisters, 
but I got my brother here that's that's actually closer. And it should be the same way with you. This is the word now. You know what I mean? It sounds crazy, but people who saw you grow up, they kind of hold you and judge you to how you were growing up instead of who you are today. Um, but the Bible is telling us to show yourself friendly, to obtain those good friends that sticks closer than a brother. So that's why I keep my family uh, as um, I give this analogy. Treat your friends like family and treat your family like friends. You ever notice or, or tr treat your treat your family like strangers and, and treat strangers like family. You ever notice when your, your parents used to invite people over to the house you know, and they, they give them the good, they give them the good dishes, you know, guests come over, they give them the good dishes, they, they get them a glass of water and stuff like that. I'd be like, yo, treat me like a stranger. Treat me like a stranger, you know what I mean? Treat me like one of your friends because, because I'm related to you, you don't give me the good stuff. You'd be like, go get a drink for yourself, you know what I mean? Jesus talked about that same thing when, when um, the woman with, uh, who was it, Mary, who came and cried tears and wiped his feet with her, um, her hair. He said, I came in this house and none of you guys, none of you guys offered to wash my feet. You know what I mean? And he showed us the example of washing the disciples' feet. And she, with her tears, washed my feet and used her hair. You know what I'm saying? So, so he was showing how this, this lowly person did greater than all these so-called righteous people. You know? So um, that's why I give that analogy. Treat, treat your uh, friends like family, you know what I mean? Hold them close, love on them, you know what I mean? And, and, and treat your family like strangers, like showing them how they're a guest in your house, showing them love, giving them the best of things, not because you know them um, growing up, don't, don't judge them for, maybe you as a kid, they, they spoke to you messed up, they used to take your toys, you know what I mean? Take your shoes and all that stuff, treat them with that love so they, so they can come in a little closer and be blessed by God. All right, that word is blessed and divine. I like that. Proverbs 18. So make sure you play this video back. Share if you care. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. We're going to open up briefly for questions, comments, concerns on the scripture. Let's do it. What you got? What y'all got? Ma, what you got? Junior, go ahead. I got something. What I got was to not stick with people that's going to hold you back. Don't stick with people that's going to hold you back. I like that. I like that. That's right. Don't, don't be a companion of fools. That's right. Go, love. You excited to go? Go. Amen. Amen. I like that. Don't cast your pearls to swine. Don't cast your pearls to swine. Don't give that which is holy to dogs. That's what, that's what Jesus said. Amen. Go ahead, Trinity. We're going to go down this line. I like this rapid fire. Don't be greedy and listen to what God says. And what does that mean? Mmm, that's good. You know, talk to them nicely, gently. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jojo. Stay with the people that's bothering you because you're gonna argue with them and it's gonna make bigger problems. That's whew, wisdom. Let's go, Mike. Go ahead. Don't be afraid of the dark. Amen. You was listening. Amen. Go ahead, Heavenly. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Please. Go. Um, don't keep dirt on your brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, don't keep dirt on your brother for a long time because it'll come back to you. You reap what you sow. Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, don't hold grudges. The, the Bible says, don't, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. I like that. I understand. I understand. See, we got to seek to understand. Amen. Anybody else? Malachi. 
You read what you saw? The, amen. You read what you saw? Kaika, what you got? Should take away. <clears throat> Masai, you go to bed. Go, go to sleep, go to bed. What I got. What I got is that, that we, we should treat everyone as strangers. Like, <laughs> uh, because like, we, like, we need to treat everyone like this. Because like, what, what, what if, like, because you can just block your blessing in the future. Mm. Just because you treat someone else like that. Because, like, that's someone that you treat it wrong. Right. What, what comes out of the And God wants to use him to make you big. Mm. Like, you messed up. Because, uh, that's that's like burning bridges, you know what I'm saying? You know, treat everybody with love. You said treat them like strangers. Look, and 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 Jesus also said invite strangers to the wedding. You know what I mean? The the marriage feast. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. So the word confirms everything that you guys are saying. You guys did great. You guys did awesome. Clap it up, clap it up for yourselves. Clap it up for yourselves. Do we got any questions online? No. Uh, Go ahead. Go for it, Jay. Is, oh, you found out the importance of going in between the translations? Yeah. Amen. Because we don't even know if the King James Version is perfect. Who studied the whole King James with, with other Bibles sitting next to it? You know what I'm saying? Is this how much my, I'm so sorry. Is this how much is confirmed? I just, um, I'm, my personal note is this how much I learned. I learned a lot about you today. Oh. Like, it's completely, it's definitely a whole other conversation with just how you move and why you move the way that you move. Like, yeah, I learned a whole lot about you. Amen. What well, is this? Yeah, and how this, and how this went. And just stuff that I got a chance to see. But, you know, Amen. I was just going to be on the glory. My, my, like, my, my opinion and my preference and the reason why I stick with the King James Version and in order to say that I stick with the King James Version is because I've dabbled in other translations. Uh, other translations like the Message Bible, the, um, right, right. the Study Bible. <laughs> What's up? I, I even have the Women Bible. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm not against, when, when it's time to study, I'm not against doing that. Right. But for me personally, I like the King James Version because for me, it gives you an opportunity. For me, um, and from experience, it gives you an opportunity for this, um, for the Spirit of God to give you revelation. Amen. With, Amen. with the breaking down of the translation, it's watered down. Like, That's right. It um it gives you the person that wrote that translation. That's right. Their point of view of what they think that is. That's right. And for me. I want God to tell me mm -hmm. what he wants me to know in the scripture. So that's the reason why I feel like I like the King James Version. Mm -hmm. You know, it was hard at first for me, like, um, to understand it at first. But I, I believe that um, it exercised discipline. That's right. How bad do you want to know God? That's right. How bad do you do you want a relationship with him? That's right. So, you know, um, in the beginning of, um, of reading it, you may fall asleep. You may doze off. But the fact of you that keep doing it and keep doing it and then talk about it with someone else. That's right. It builds a zeal for him. So mm -hmm. that's why I like the King James Version. Amen. Amen. Go for it. Uh, right now, uh, I'm speaking uh, through experience. Uh, I, I like reading like, all the translations because like, each translation has like its own part of the piece of the book. That's right. Chapter. That's like right. Like I said before, like, it was just one scroll. And so to be translated to, to be translated to that 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 many Bibles is amazing to me. That's and right. So like uh, recently, recently I read a uh, scripture. Uh, it was Psalms 23. And yeah. I, I read. I, I, at first, like I knew about it. Like I, I, I had. You knew about heart, huh? Yeah, I, I knew about heart. Um, yeah. At first, like I, I, I could break it down. And it was pretty good. But then, I, but then I read every single translation uh, for it. And, and, and now I have like a deeper understanding of like That's you know, right. Of the chapter. And, and that's why I like the reading like all the translations. That's right, that's right. You're on so a whole nother level now. So he liked the study and I like the revelation. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, man. Anybody else? Did we got any questions online? Oh, no. It just says Love someone just said that's very important. Amen. Love this family. Love lovely word. We love you. We love you. Don't I have to fear. always remind myself of that. Don't stay in fear. That's right. Don't stay in fear. 
Don't stay in fear. Amen. Amen. Um, that was that was powerful, man. We learned about the translations. We learned how important it is to to get closer to the original language. Get yourself a strong strongest um um strongest concordance. Yeah. A strong concordance of, of the Bible. It got the Hebrew and the Greek translation. That brings you closer. It gives you all the um possible definition. Um, I don't know if you know about etymology, but it teaches you the origin of the word and. And it just gives you more depth. And that's what reading all the different translations mean. Because remember, this Bible was translated into so many different languages. And we, we learn the cultures of those peoples from whatever language you're reading out of. So everybody's going to get a different understanding. And that's why the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. A lot of people like to use that. A lot of pastors like to use that to mean, come to my church. You know what I mean? But we're talking about, but that's talking about the body of believers. This is, this is church. He said, when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Amen. So um, it's a good thing what God is doing in the world today. He used everything for our good. Amen. So, you know, we bless him for that. Oh, you got something? Go for it. Yes. Um, treat all strangers good because that could be your test. Amen. Treat, know when treat all strangers good because that could be your test. Okay. Do <laughs> hey, you don't think it's easier to um, treat strangers good than family? <laughs> um, and what is a stranger? But you can answer the first one. To me, a stranger is someone that's not related to you. All right. Okay. It's easier. It might be easier to treat a stranger good than family. That's right. That's right. I just thought of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, please write. Hey man, hey man. <laughs> but that's right. Um, treat all strangers good. So should you treat your family good? You should treat your family good and strangers good as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. You would like to treat your family as good as a stranger, but mm. you know, some family members just don't qualify the criteria of that fitting. Okay. So you would want to treat the strangers even greater because. Or oh, just as good, not greater. It's like a balance. So you go okay. against what he said, because okay. what he said was what he's teaching is that we should treat, treat our families like strangers. All right. Whether if we feel like, like whether if we feel like strangers like family. That's right. But that's 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 good. But um, just treat them however you treat strangers. The hardest thing to do is treat your family good, right? You agree? Is is really hard. So so it is because they know you. Right. So so we shouldn't we shouldn't judge our family members, but keep in mind to to treat them like how we would treat a stranger, even when they don't deserve it, especially when they don't deserve it. And that's the teachings of Jesus. Amen. I, I think the hardest thing, the hardest thing is, and you, you look at the parallel, like the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you were saying that. It's so hard for your family to treat you a certain way because they know you and they judge you by what you live by. That's right. The reverse of that is it's hard for you to treat your family a certain way because you know so much of what they were. And you That's right. And judging them the same way they judge you. Right. That's right. And they remain in the state of they are strangers to me. Every day I meet them, they, they can be a completely different person. That's right. To, to treat them the way that you want to be treated. That's right. As a stranger. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. That's the way to treat all your family members. And I know personally because... You know, I look and I strive to treat my family like that. You know, like not to just tell my mother anything just because I've seen her something. That's right. That's right. She's at now and be like, okay, you know, I guess you according to where you're at today. And then same for my brother, you know, I have to treat him the same way. That's right. I don't know what might have happened that night. That's right. That night, you might have had a whole epiphany, never went to sleep, woke up a whole other person. That's right. And I want to make sure that I answer the person that's there today, not only the person that was there yesterday. That's right. That is a bit, I want, that is beautiful. Because to me, I felt like, um, you know, uh, Stop it. it can be very difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, hence why, you know, Stephen said what he said. It can be very difficult, but it's very possible. Mm -hmm. And what, what helps And it's me, a command. It's a command. Yeah, what helps me do that, because that, I do the very same thing. I treat my family members as strangers. 
because I believe that every day is a new grace and mercy. You know, it's, we're given that's, a chance every day. That's the word. To, to, to be a change and to change. Amen. You know, to be a better self. So what, what, what helps me is remembering that I wasn't always, you know, where that's, I am today. That's as the far word. As knowledge or even where my heart is. I was once in a dark place. So what I, what I do when I look at my, my family members... I look at myself. That's right. You know, uh, the, the command is to love others like you love yourself, mm -hmm. right? So that's why it's very important to love yourself first. That's right. So you're Amen. learning how to love others, that's and right. even family members. So, but in learning how to love myself and, and uh, knowing what love is, period, which is um, Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, mm -hmm. that's what love is. Once we first learn what lo love is, then we can first learn to love ourselves, and then we can learn to love others. So I feel like, you know, the, the best way to to um to be patient with others and to love family members and to treat them as strangers is Yo, by looking at yourself. You know what I mean? Amen. And treating them as you would want. And that's that's what the problems were saying. To to listen first. Right. And all you listen, get and get understanding. Right, listen first. See where they're coming from today. Understanding you know? is love. And, Amen. And, and not treat them like you know them. That's treat right. them like you don't know them. Like That's they're right. Getting to know them. So many people want to so, do that. So many people yeah, want to treat you treat like, you they like know you. oh, yeah. I knew you from back in the days. Right. I knew you. Nah, treat me like, find out who I am today okay. because I'm not right. the same person as I was back right. in the day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh. They, they, actually, they actually did the same thing to Jesus. You may say that, uh, not Nashville, right? Yeah, uh, so, so, when, when Jesus went to his own town, uh, he, he was like, oh, I'm the Messiah, and, and then, uh, and they was like, oh, what? Isn't that, uh, Joseph's son? Yeah. Yeah. Son? Isn't that Mary's son? The carpenter? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, I was going to say, and that's why the Bible says that Jesus performed less miracles in his hometown because because it's unbelief because they're unbelief even the way I look at miracles now has changed so much you know I mean the fact that a person I'm going to say it again the fact that a person created is a whole miracle amen the fact that a person might have swept the floor is a miracle that's a miracle a tree is very free is a whole miracle that's right but no good thing that you that is given by God can even be received from that person because of how you know them that's right so you come before no miracle they can't see the God in you. They can't. Pretty much. You know what I mean? And that's right. why a, a pop is without honoring his own home. That's right. Because they think it's, they know you. Right. It's always important that when you're looking at somebody else to look at yourself and be like, how can I make sure? Yes. I'm, I'm making sure you got honor with no matter where you at. You that's know? right. I can see the God in you no matter what the situation That's right. Be, that's you know, right. So, Amen. Very important. That's right. Amen. You got something to say? What? Keep your armor on because you're in war and you have to be a soldier every day. I love you. Keep your armor on because you're in war and you have to be a soldier every day. Amen. Amen. That was a good word, man. Proverbs. Very powerful book. A lot of deep stuff in Proverbs, and and this is, an, this is a perfect example why why you should gather with people and talk about the Word. If you're studying the Word, if you're studying anything, studying the Bible, don't don't sit in some corner and think you have some kind of epiphany and revelation by yourself. It needs to be tested. Faith faith untested is faith that not cannot be trusted. You know everything has to be tried in the fire to make sure that it's pure. You, it has to be purified. Go ahead. So now go for it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. Amen. That's right. And the seed has to be planted in the dark, in the dirt. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, that's really good. That's really good. 
So once again, y'all, this was a great conversation. Let's do this again um, really soon. What you guys say? Go, go, Roy. God makes God makes our hearts. That's his favorite saying. God makes our heart. Amen. He makes our hearts. Meaning he he didn't. It's not. It's not that. You know, our heart is made. He makes it. He he's working on it. Amen. You know, and we gotta allow him to work on our hearts. So. <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be. That's how you know he's he drinking from the living water. That's, that's how you right. know that's how you know he's wise because the, the word said that um the wise are bubbling with wisdom. Bubbling with wisdom. So y'all know Jason to be wise. So if you got any um any questions, Jason Jason will be able to answer your question according to his knowledge and experience, guys. Not only in the dance world but spiritual life as well. So, questions, comments, concerns. Did we get any more since we've been speaking? Me. All right, guys. So, make sure you play this video back. Get all the good food. Eat from this. Share it with somebody else that needs it. We talked about family at the end. We, we talked about so many things. When you read Proverbs, do it like this. Gather, get your study groups together. Gather together. You know what I mean? And study that word for real. Study what you're stutter, studying with your family and friends. You know, when you learn something, share it with somebody else. Bounce some information off of them. There are mirror images of you, you know. Um, come together, you know, and let God speak through you all. So let us pray this prayer. Father God, we just thank you for your word. You've answered us, God. And thank you for the demonstration of your power and of your wisdom, Lord. Before we started this, we prayed for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, God. And you came and you poured out, God. Thank you for giving us eyes to see like we asked for at the beginning of this service, Lord. Hallelujah. I ask that you bless everyone that might share. Bless everyone that might comment, Lord God. Bless everybody on social media world, God. I speak a healing into their lives, Lord God. I speak prosperity into their lives. And first, Lord God, their minds must be healed. Their hearts must be healed, Lord God, from all the past traumas, oh God. Lord, lead them to repentance, Lord, yes, so they can let go of the things that burden them. You yes. said, lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. Let us press toward the mark of the high calling. Yes, Lord, help them, Lord God, to see you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for using me, Lord God. May, may they see the, the spirit behind the man. May they see you and not me, Lord. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. Touch everyone who spoke a word, who spoke into this service, Lord God. Give them a special blessing, Lord. Yes, a special Lord. blessing upon everyone, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord God. Have your way. Let your will be done in their lives, Lord God. And we claim this day, this season, this time, in spiritual victory, in Yeshua's mighty name, amen. amen. And it is so. Shalom. Shalom, y'all. Have a good day. Enjoy. Shalom.